is something absolutely bizarre. This latest episode of Raw, which did feature Brock Lesnar listening to a briefcase as if it was some kind of music machine and where WWE revealed a brand new title was still being written as the show was live on air. That's like me doing one of these videos and being fed lines during the process. As we all know, it's just me ranting away like a massive bald idiot. Or the MBI. Oh, I like it. Anyway, here's exactly what was said from your friend, my friend, everybody's friend, Dave Meltzer, courtesy of the Wrestling Observer. It wasn't a disaster, just very disorganized. Just a lot of things changed as the show was going on. That's all. It was all just normal stuff, but apparently backstage it was extremely disorganized and things were being changed as the show was going on. Matches were changed. And then in reference to why on earth WWE even gets together as a writing team before Monday. I mean, they could probably just rock up on the first day of the week and come up with something. If you're going to change it anyway, he said, well, they do keep some of the segments. It's not like they nix everything. They just change some percentages of it because Vince is on a whim. What are you going to do? I have no explanation for this. It is what it is. Well, I have an explanation because this isn't the best idea in the world. Why? Here's why. Now, Meltzer used all of this to explain why Baron Corbin did get pinned on Raw, and I actually think that ties everything in together. Because if you have been keeping a keen eye on the product, you would have realized that it does seem as if Big Boy Baron is being built up so he can take on Seth Rollins in a universal title program. Do with that what you will if you want to take it and chuck it in the bin and pretend it's not true. I understand, but that is just something it seems like you're going to have to deal with. And yet, on this last episode of Raw, Baron Corbin got beaten in a tag team match alongside Bobby Lashley as he was taking on Rollins and Kofi Kingston. And do you know who got pinned in that match? Yes, it was Baron Corbin. And do you know who pinned him? It was Kofi Kingston. That doesn't make any sense, especially because in Baron Corbin's corner, he had Bobby Lashley. And as far as I can work out, WWE doesn't have any plans for Bobby Lashley right now. So why didn't he take the pin? Actually, that could be a whole other why video. Why doesn't WWE have any plans for Bobby Lashley? But when I look at this situation, it just makes me scratch my head. With that all said though, how on earth is anybody gonna keep up with these small pointers if things are changing when the show is live? Just imagine how stressful that must be. I couldn't put up with that. If I knew I had some kind of concept or some kind of plan that I had to execute, and then I was told, literally, as I was walking out the door, or walking out the grinner position, oh, by the way, Simon, we've now done this, this, and this. You now have to say this, this, and this. Have a great time. I'm probably going to feel a little bit under pressure. In fact, I'm amazed that anything smooth is happening in front of the cameras, if that is the case, because it would be bad enough it happened the day of, like even when you turned up at the arena. But when you're right there, who thinks this is a good plan? It does seem clear that this is all to do with Vince McMahon's worries when it does come to the ratings, and we have discussed this before. But it is why Brock Lesnar is back on television winning money in the bank. It's why we've got a crazy new title that's 24 hours, seven days a week. And it's why we've all of a sudden got a brand new wildcard rule, which has killed the brand split. We are in throw everything at the wall and see what sticks mode, but that is an issue within itself. So let me break it down a la DX. Nothing WWE can do in the next few weeks is going to fix the ratings problem. I know that bringing Lesnar back did help and Raw was around about 2.5. But they don't want 2.5. They more than likely want 3.5s, if not higher. So even if Goldberg, Undertaker, I don't know, Sting, Stone Cold, Steve Austin, The Rock, even if you bring all these guys back to Raw, they still ain't going to help you when you start looking towards the end of the year and to 2020, because they're not going to be on TV each and every single week. They are merely there to pop a rating, and pop a rating doesn't work. Well, like I say, it doesn't work down the line. When you do that, there's still no long-term reason for you to keep coming back. And let's face it, age and the fact that The Rock's a big movie star, that means they're not going to be doing what you want them to do anyway. In your head, you remember beer trucks and them beating the hell out of each other, but they won't. Rock will just cut some promos. Maybe Stone Cold Steve Austin drives around on his ATV for a little while. Somebody will get a stunner. Someone like Fandango. But that's not lighting up the entertainment world now, is it? So do you know what you don't want to do? 
hot shot angles. Instead, you need to take a deep breath, you need to calm down, and you need to start focusing on the end of the year. That's what you need to do. Come up with some amazing storylines that will build throughout the summer and slowly, hopefully, fans will start coming back in drips and drabs. That will then get out there on social media and like I say, individuals will start talking to each other. And if that then works, you'll get a bigger increase towards the end of 2019 and that's when you pay these narratives off. And if you pay them off in a satisfying way, these people are all going to stay hanging around and they'll tell their mates, hey, you should come back to WWE. Listen to this cool stuff they did over the last six months. You had your slightly bigger audience just as you were ready to pull the trigger. You pulled the trigger and it worked. Then they'll think about keeping around. And sure, maybe at that point, you'll only be at like, I don't know, a 2.6. But again, I don't think the numbers that we're getting today are have anything to do with the last few months. They're all down to the last few years, which means when you reverse the trend, you have to assume the same thing is going to happen. You're going to have to start putting seeds in place now that people can believe in come like, I don't know, 2022, but it'll be all right because then you look back to 2019 and you say, well, thank goodness we made the change there because now we're benefiting from it. You need social media to start singing the praise of WWE, so lap fans decide to give it another shot. And yeah, I know, I understand. Like I say, Brock Lesnar pushing a big briefcase to his ear and going, da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. don't know what that song was, but maybe that's the song he hears in his head. I don't know. I don't know, Lesnar. Of course, that was the greatest thing I'd ever seen but it's not gonna keep me tuned in if he does it week in, week out for the next six months. And he probably won't. He's probably already forgotten he did there. I'm not saying this is an easy thing to pull off either. If I was drafted into the creative team tomorrow, I'm not gonna turn the company around in 24 hours, but I don't think anybody can either. It has to start with the foundations, and that for me is long-term story planning, long-term angles, and hopefully just sparking a tiny response. But if you do want some of my input, if you do want to push the likes of Samoa Joe and actually just you know bring Rusev back to TV because I don't know where he's been, I would be perfectly okay with it. Just saying, you do with that whatever you want. And if you want to go to the extreme, yes, this is exactly what WCW used to do back in the dying days of Nitro. I am not saying that WWE is anywhere near as bad as that, and I don't think it is genuinely. But when you see something explode, you don't walk into the ashes and then try and replicate that blast. You learn from it. I mean, what's next? What are you going to do next? You're going to start doing Judy Bagwell on a pole matches? It wasn't even Judy Bagwell on a pole. It was Judy Bagwell, who was Bath Bagwell's mum, and she was on a forklift. And I'm pretty sure whoever he was facing, I've wiped it from my memory, would have won Bath Bagwell's mum had they been victorious in the match. Why did anybody in the wrestling world have to do that to begin with? Sometimes people that don't watch wrestling come to me, they go, oh Miller, I did a little Google on the old Google machine and I found out about this crazy match where some old woman would hoist it up in the air and I then have to explain why I watched this. Please don't do that kind of stuff anymore. I'd rather Drake Maverick pissed his pants again. This is another reason I hope that AEW does really well because I hope it scares Vince McMahon and WWE to get back to where they're at the top of their game. And I tell you, a great idea, a great plan would not to be rewriting the thing as the thing is on the air. I mean, I can't even believe somebody would even put that into practice. And look, you are doing some cool things right now, WWE. I like this whole edgier, grittier, raw, third hour. But what I don't want you to do is this. Don't get three weeks, four weeks down the line and go, oh, it's clearly not working. Look, the ratings haven't gone up. What were we thinking? And kill it because then you haven't given it a chance. Stick with it for now. Otherwise, we have what I like to call the Mojo Rawley approach. Blue goop on your face, broken mirrors everywhere, and given no chance in hell. Now, yeah, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you think about Raw being written. As the show was going on, like, share, and subscribe. Handle what culture I've read us some articles, a lot of which are about Raw and the craziness going on behind the scenes at WWE. Follow What Culture on Twitter at What Culture WWE and watch more videos here on What Culture Wrestling's YouTube channel. Hard to smile and talk. My name is Simon from What Culture. Thank you very much for watching the Y series. And I am still genuinely perplexed by this. When I heard Dave Meltzer talking about it on Wrestling Observer Radio, I went out and read about it on Reddit and various wrestling news sites, and everyone was saying the same thing. Disorganized chaos. Maybe chaos is a bit strong, but no, in no other field would you do this? Like Game of Thrones wouldn't do it. I know everyone hates Game of Thrones, but they wouldn't do it. Seinfeld back in the day wouldn't do it. What's a live show? I can't even think of a live show. Saturday Night Live? I don't think they would do it. Maybe they would, but they kind of can. 
because that show is all over the place anyway, and it's a comedy show. I know that WWE and Raw and SmackDown can be comedy shows, but when you're trying to bring drama and tie things into what happened the week before, of course there's going to be cracks, of course there's going to be holes, because you'll be so focused on this one evening, anything else, well, you're just, it's the stress of it, the stress of it, I can't worry about what we did last week, I just need to get a shout out the door. And that's not going to work down the line, you're just going to get more and more nuts, and eventually everybody's going to walk out. I mean, that's the extreme. Just stop doing it. That's my point. See you soon.